Yeah, this agent started talking to me about modeling. Of course, at the time, me, I can't even believe, I mean, I didn't believe I was beautiful. So yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? How can I be a model? Mm, I can't be a model. I can't even stand in heels. I'm a tomboy. You know, I'm rough. I'm like, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm dark. I'm skinny. I'm ugly, whatever. So they were like, no, 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 you know, please. Our agency in, in, in um, we've shown your pictures to the agent in New York. And they really, they, they're in love with you. They love your look. They want you, think you're unique, mm. you're amazing. And um, yeah, so they told me, okay, you know what? Just give us a chance, go to Paris for a week and you see what happens, right? My God, from eh. Rukana to Paris, mm. girl. <laughs> My agents just told me once, ah, okay, we have, um, we have a request for you for Victoria's Secrets. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. Why not? You know, there are some castings, they tell you to go. You're just like, I'm not going to get it, so you don't even go, mm. right? So I think I didn't even go for the first um, casting. Then they're like, Ajuma, you're late for Victoria's Secret, because they're actually asking for me. I was like, oh, OK. They really are. Yeah, they're actually asking for me. OK. They're like, OK, let me reschedule for you. So I went the next day, and I casted. I was like, mm, why are these people wasting my time here? <laughs> you know, mm. I went, and I walked, I left. And then the next, the next stage is your own option. Option means they have, um, what do you call it? They have um, shortlisted mm. and they have their board with the models, the possible models, but those are just a handful mm -hmm. and um, you're on the shortlist. I was like, oh, okay. Me? Yes, you have to go for a callback. Mm -hmm. oh, now it's excited. <laughs> This is how we're going to do. Mm -hmm. You start with, um, you put your shoulders back. Upright posture. Yeah. Shoulders back, actually. Mm -hmm. And then pelvis forward. <laughs> so why, why, why you do pelvis forward? Mm -hmm. It's because you're supposed to look like, um, in high fashion, you're supposed to look like a 14 year old boy. Flat, flat, like to me, flat. <laughs> so when mm -hmm. you do this and this, you pinch in your bum because your bum becomes, you, your bum looks smaller, mm -hmm. then you look longer. Okay. So one. Uh, and then you put one leg in front of the other. What's up everybody? My name is Lily Aisha and welcome to Tuko Extra. Now today I'm in the space of beauty, space of confidence, space of, ah, I love it. I'm just in a good space and I'm chilling with Ajuma and we're going to learn so much about her. She has a lot to tell us from where she came from, how she got here, how she does it with the heels, how she smiles and waves, <laughs> like the models. <laughs> Welcome, Ajuma. Thank you. So nice to meet you. Thank you. Like I really said, nice to be oh, here. Yeah, Thanks like, for having me. Thank you for having us in your space <laughs> oh. because you've come to your space. Oh, Asante. <laughs> like I said, when we saw you the first thing we said was, "Wow, eh? you're tall, uh -huh. you're beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yani, yeah, you're just, you know, like even your smile." Ah. <laughs> watch it, watch it, huh? <laughs> I don't yeah. know how to take compliments. You know how to take compliments? Uh, not really. You just, I'm not that you're good. Like, <laughs> you're just smiling. Yeah, I'm too. Sh I'm shy, sort of. Really? <laughs> You're shy. Kind of. Ish. Okay. Somewhere. Yes. <laughs> and though you're always in like rooms mm. with many people. I know. That's my thing though. Yeah. You see. So, but yeah. You have it's to, my thing. You have to act parts. Yes. All it's right. my job. All right. So, um, I think we'll just start from the beginning of, mm -hmm. from where you came from. Okay. Of course, we've read your stories and you know Ajuma is from Turkana mm -hmm. and all that. Maybe you can just tell us your story now yourself from the horse's mouth where you came from and i read also your mother your, your mother gave back to interest with yeah that's a very interesting one okay yes mm -hmm. yeah so <clears throat> ajumana senyana mm -hmm. born in trokana lodwa specifically mm -hmm. um yeah like you said product of a teenage mother mm -hmm. of course that was um a taboo in the culture mm -hmm. for you know somebody to have um a child out of wedlock my grandfather got really upset <laughs> with my mother, of course, and chased her out. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, so we're out on our own in the village, homeless. Okay, that was when she was pregnant with me, yeah. till she gave birth mm -hmm. to me as well. But then later on, we were taken in by um, good Samaritans that were posted. It was like, um, you know, this um, 
you know how you have doctors from international doctors uh -huh. who are posted in small African villages. Yeah. So there was a family that was posted in my village called Nawaitorong mm -hmm. in Lodwa. And you know, they took us in, took care of me, put my mother back in school. Um, I grew up, I was put in a private um, British boarding school when I was small. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so my mother could have obviously um, become, um, establish herself. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. I think that is my early childhood. Early childhood. Yes. But of course, like, like I always say, it's a once in a lifetime chance. And I was like, you know, one in a, like one in thousands. Because my friends, the life they lived was so different compared to who, where I was or, you know, the school I went was different. You know, how I dressed was different. Mm. I spoke English and, you know, but yet we, were, we came, from we came from the same place. exact um, um, place. Yeah. So you said your grandfather was so mad at your mother. Was she beaten? <laughs> or yeah, was, I don't it was know. just like, get out. I, mean, I, was, a, I was a fetus. You were so in here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's never told you that story. Mm, not really. Yeah, I don't know. You I don't can't know. remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So in this, um, the family that took you in, mm -hmm. um, is it that they just saw and they said, we want her or is it that she went and spoke for herself or is it that what how did they just speak on her or is yeah. it just God's grace? i'm not sure of the details mm -hmm. but probably was just uh, like you say god's grace and um you know how you see like a young mother and a little baby with nowhere to go obviously you will take them in mm. right yeah and i will i always say you know i'm such a big i don't know i have so much empathy and I have huge passion for philanthropy and I feel like that is where it was instilled inside of me mm. because I feel like somebody literally rescued me and that is why I have a dignified life today. Mm, yes. Okay. So I'm so passionate for, you know, philanthropy, giving back. Mm. Which is very important. Mm. So and then you went to an international school and here you are English a baby, you yes. know, she's going on and on. Yeah. And you finished school, you did both um, primary and high school. Yes. But those are grade, the quality grade something. Yes. No, I did, uh, yeah. Like, you did 844? No, 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 A's and, I mean, IGCSE. IGCSE, yeah. yeah. And so you did that? Um, yes, I'm, I did that, all that. Till the end, till yes. after high school? Yes. Uh, okay, and yes. then after that? And then, hey, during school, you know how you have like, um, <laughs> you know, I looked different because I was from this, Pararad village. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, I came to this affluent school with like rich kids, you know, that dignitary children, children from all over Africa. And oh, there, were um, black, there were black children. Yeah, black. but there was also white, white kids uh -huh. from expats, you know. Ah, okay. So I was so crazy. It was like a different world for me because I came from this little village where I was, we used to run around barefoot, you know, it's you don't normal. even know when you're going to shower next. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're living in a manyata or whatever, you don't have a TV, you know, all these things. Then you come to this other different world where these children come from these crazy flamboyant lives, big houses, you know, they're dropped with um, huge cars, big cars. They're talking about how they have bathtubs. I didn't even know what a bathtub was with golden handles. <laughs> So for me, it was like a totally different world. And of course, I looked different as well. Yeah. I was tall, skinny, dark, and you know. Mm -hmm. So I got teased a lot because mm -hmm. I was, I stuck out like a sore, a, a, a sore thumb, mm -hmm. you know. So of course, you know how kids are, you know, when you have something different about you, that is what they're going to pick on. So I was picked on a lot in school with, with my dark skin, mm -hmm. like my dark skin tone, my height, you know, everything. Mm. <laughs> So I grew up more or less feeling like, I okay, I don't, belong. I, I don't belong, I'm different. And of course, because of your dark skin, the lighter, the more beautiful you are. The way that was how yeah. it was put at the time. So kids tease me like charcoal, calling me for like silly names, charcoal, monkey, you know, all these kind of monkey. things. I know, it was crazy. So, um, you know, so I didn't, I didn't feel beautiful. I felt different. I didn't feel like I belonged, but then I had something that you know was on my side which was sports yeah i was a very very good sports woman mm -hmm. i was a captain of all the sports teams i ran and i like you know i ran and i won all the races and things like that so that i kind of hid behind that yes as um you know my confidence was sort of low yeah. when it came to my appearance but that lifted you up lifted me yeah. up right 
because, uh, you know, p people, everybody looked up to me because, hey, Ajuma can run, she can, you know, she's very good at sports. And I got all the medals every time there was like a sports function and mm. so on. So, I mean, that worked for me and got me through. <laughs> yes. School. Mm. All right. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and then I also read that you were, after, now that you mentioned about running, mm. you were at Skipchoge. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. So, you see how, how I used to run? I won everything. <laughs> like in school. You were that chick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so <clears throat> Kipchoge's um, um, coach, mm -hmm. his main coach, he was, he was an old guy, came to as a guest of honor on a sports day, oh, one mm -hmm. of my sports days in school. Mm -hmm. And he saw me running. He's like, oh my gosh, I want that kid and I want to give her a scholarship, oh, wow. a, an athletic scholarship. She has so much potential. But at the time I was young. So they decided to put me in the um, International Olympic Committee um, camp mm -hmm. in Eldoret, at Kipchoge. Wow, okay. Yeah, together with IAAF, they, mm -hmm. they, they are partners. Mm -hmm. So I was there for a year. They trained me. Hey, it was so hard. It was hard, I'm sure. And painful. I twisted my ankle. I had boils and it was just crazy. I was used to sweat salt and, you know, you just keep pushing. You can never, there's no limit. Mm -hmm. You, you, you reach, you know, they want you to come to get here. They push you even further. You get there, you push, you know, it's really, really painful. And it was like three times a day. You know, you train three times a day. You can't have a holiday, even, even if you take like two or three days off. By the time you come back, it's Yanni. Two. Yes, no, you're starting back. It's like you're Ooh. starting from scratch again, like to work up to that particular place that you were before. Hey, so it was quite difficult, but I was the national champion in 400 meters. Yeah. I became the national champion in, um, yeah, in oh, which year? Anyways, I was a junior at the time. Uh -huh. I was still um, yeah. um, a teenager. Mm. And then um, I was in the newspaper for that. <laughs> and I was spotted by a Ford agent that um, was in the country scouting for models. Somehow they're like, you know what? We have to find this girl, you know? You know, she, she has like, you know, the right look. We, want, we need to find her. Mm. So somehow they hunted me down. I don't know how. Oh, you still don't know. <laughs> somehow, uh -huh. yeah, they, they found me. And um, yeah, this agent started talking to me about modeling. Of course, at the time, me, I can't even believe. I mean, I didn't believe I was beautiful. So yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? How can I be a model? Mm, I can't be a model. I can't even stand in heels. I'm a tomboy. You know, I'm rough. I'm like, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm dark. I'm skinny. I'm ugly, whatever. So they were like, no, 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 you know, please. Our agency in, in, in um, we've shown your pictures to the agent in New York and they really, they, they're in love with you. They love your look. They want you, think you're unique, mm. you're amazing. And um, yeah, so they told me, okay, you know what? Just give us a chance, go to Paris for a week and you see what happens, right? My God, from eh. Rukana to Paris, mm. girl. <laughs> so I, um, they took me, <clears throat> They took me, um, I, I went to Paris, I mm -hmm. tried it for a week, and that was, then it was history, because I was booking everything, like, immediately. I got Lacoste, Vivian Westwood, you know, all the big shows, <laughs> Jean-Paul Gaultier, I did all these, like, within the first week. They're like, you know what, I think this is for you. And then I was like, okay, this is easy. Just, you just walk and you get paid, <laughs> instead of all that pain. Yeah, the pain of being an athlete. <laughs> of being an athlete, I was like, hmm. I think this is a good nini, good um, good deal. So I just remained as a model. Yes. Oh, then I worked in all the fashion capitals, New York, Paris, Milan, London, Tokyo, everywhere. Yeah. Did you ever see yourself coming here? Any you've been born and you say, girl, I'm walking bare feet. Yes. And look at me now in heels <laughs> on runways. Just, I love it. I love yeah, that story. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. So you just decided you're not going to run anymore. Um yeah. Yeah, I was just like, no, I'm not about my, this My pain, coach my... was so disappointed though. Yeah. I had the best coach. She was also an Olympic um, gold medalist in mm -hmm. 800 meters. Mm -hmm. And that's what he was training me for. Oh. He's called Paul Lereng and he was, he was also a Trukana. Oh. Yeah, so he was so disappointed because the girls I used to win, went to Be Beijing, can't remember which one it was. I think it was Beijing. They went to Beijing and they were first and second. And, they, and I used to like, you know, I, I used to like run and you know, we used to be like very strong together. 
Sometimes I used to beat them also, so it was like he was so disappointed. He was like, "Now could I beat you?" Mm. <laughs> like, mm. there's, there's my other story on this other side. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, I felt bad for a little bit, but oh well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Life yeah. moves on and yes, we have yes. to grow. Yeah. You spoken about being um, coached by Kipchoge's coach. Were you mm -hmm. ever in interaction with Kipchoge at that time? Yes. Did you ever meet him? Of course, of course. He's he, he's the one who was managing us. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, oh girl, yeah, you met each other. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. So you actually even ran, like, were you training with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, yes. I mean, not really. But of course, we had, um, you know, that camp. That is where, like, everyone from um, all the athletes internationally, mm -hmm. they come there because of the high altitude. Mm. So normally, you have, um, you know, other athletes c coming there, and we have different coaches. You know, so mm -hmm. Kipchoge himself doesn't um, train us, train. but he's um, he was present. Yeah, he yeah he was present. He made sure that we were fine and um, we got everything we needed. Yeah. And at this time, when you're doing all this, now that we are now in Paris, we are everywhere. Mm -hmm. Where is your mother at this time? In Trukana. Uh -huh. Yeah. You just. No, no, my mother, my mother has a, you know, after that, she um, created an NGO, women, uh -huh. women empowerment. Um, NGO, mm -hmm. where they taught um, HIV, AIDS, women rights, and then also created employment for the women by building a lodge, bakery, and so on. Mm. Yeah, so that's what she's still running till today. Up to date. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that's also a passion she has because yes. <laughs> she's seen where she's come from. She's like, I don't want anyone else to go. To Not even place. that. The mm -hmm. community needs people like her, like me. You know, we they need they need yeah they need philanthropists mm -hmm. to come and you know, and um, intervene. Yeah. Okay, and throughout also, like I've said, I've read about you and throughout, I've not heard you or seen you speak about your father. Do you know? No, I don't know him, you so I told you. You don't know him? <laughs> no, you know, when, um, of course, when my, my grandfather um, <laughs> found out, found out a, it was like serious. He took out his AK-47 oh and was God. looking for my father. Where he at? <laughs> yes, so he ran off and yeah. I have uh, never, mm -mm. never even, he's never even reached out. Mm. Being where you are, oh wow! <laughs> I don't know. For me, it's not. I. Uh, you you okay? I'm fine. Yeah, yeah I'm fine. I don't know him, mm -hmm. so I guess he's like a stranger to me mm. because I don't know him. I'm, I've been fine. I'm okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> okay. So now you're modeling. You're mm. in different countries. Where did you then decide to settle down and you know continue your career? Of course, I I'm in Sweden. Yeah. Mm. No Sweden because my um. My, yeah, my husband and uh -huh. my yeah family is from there, my, and my in-laws are there. Uh -huh. But um, I based myself in London and uh -huh. New York uh -huh. because of the language barrier. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I can't start basing myself in Milan or Paris and things because of the you know right. French. French yeah. So I decided I chose to base myself in London and work from there, go to the different um, cities to work, and then after that. Kachoka choka kidogo I kaboeka I decided to go and base myself in New York. Mm -hmm. um, I did that. Then eventually, 20, 2013, I moved back home because I felt like, hey, okay, it's time mm. for me to like establish something at home. Mm. And I came home and started my um, casting agency, Ajuma Limited. Ajuma Limited yeah. yeah. So this, um, I deal with. I'm a casting director, and I also manage um, talent. Mm -hmm from babies to grandmas. So you see all these TVC commercials, yeah. Safaricom, Coca-Cola. You know, we do both Kenya and just the whole of Pan-Africa. Oh, okay. Yes, and um, I, we also do the billboard. We cast also for billboard ads. Mm -hmm. So that is my main um, company here in, uh, okay. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. But then also, of course, like I said, I've always, you know, after I left Rokana, that thing has always haunted me like, okay, I need to go back. I felt obligated mm. to go back and help my community. Of course, like I told you, the, the difference between my life and my yeah, friends yeah. or families that I left back home was so different because I used to go back home every holiday, school holiday. You know, my friends are still sitting yeah, under trees, were, yeah. going to school. You know, they don't have any books to write on. I want to be at to, you know, their clothes are tattered and things. And, you know, felt like, you know, I mean, I think, I mean, I always felt it just haunted me. I needed to go back. So I set up a Juma Foundation. Mm -hmm. Just in the beginning, I started with just mentorship, mentoring young girls because they dropped out of school mm -hmm. when they were, you know, teenagers because they didn't see the they point need. of finishing, mm -hmm. yeah, point of finishing school, the value of education because after, after primary school, 
you can't go further because you have to pay for high school. Mm. So uh, they just started their families early. And I guess the same as my mother, mm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah, she also dropped out of school. Um, she was a teenage mother as well. So I was trying to combat that when I started the foundation, where I just mentored them, you know, asking them to, asking them to hold on to hope. You never know what life has in store for you. Then after that, I started um, handing out um, sanitary towels to keep the girls in school. Mm. So um, I also went into the refugee community in partnership with UNHCR and FilmAid. I used to give um, um, school-based um, programs, I mean, not, not skill-based programs in the refugee camps around the area mm. of my expertise which was modeling, mm -hmm. photography, makeup artistry, design. Then I also, Google also came in for digital skill. Oh, wow. Because the thing is that <clears throat> you always think like, when you go there, people are like, you know, skinny, sad, you know, depressed and things like this. But mm -hmm. when you get in there, oh my gosh, it's, it's so lively, it's vibrant, you know, people, you know, young people have swag. I don't know where they get it from, yeah. but you'd be like, hey, you're well, slaying, how? In the, hey, in the it, refugee camp. Mm. So I went in and, you know, I started like these programs. This was in order for them, you know, so they just don't sit there and wait for handouts from the yeah. UN all the time because they just get the basics. Mm. So I decided to help them become entrepreneurs and more independent. So the thing is that I took the, you know, experts from the different fields. Like I, me as the model, I took somebody from Google. I took a make really good makeup makeup artist from Linton. Mm. Linton's actually yeah, came Linton. in. Anne McCreeth came, for example, the designer, and uh, Emmanuel Jumbo, the photographer. Mm -hmm. So we all went. We do this, um, of course, um, program with them. Then when we leave, of course, they're able to you know set up photo studios. Yeah. They're able to you know um, design clothes for dignitaries because it's huge. You know, you have a huge. Um, um, NGO community there. So the dignitaries will be able to come, you know, they're able to create clothes for them. Weddings, they're able to do makeup for weddings, Whoa. you know, and so on. And then I actually found one model where I, p I posted on my on my Instagram and somebody wanted her in Paris, an agency. Actually, United Colors of Benetton wanted her. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so while I was trying, we're trying to prepare paperwork and all these kind of things with the, of course, with the U UNHCR, mm -hmm. I came back, I mean, now when it was time, like almost going, of course, I'm checking up on her. She was gone. Imagine her father paid for her on the other side of the border and they just came and just kidnapped her. And oh she's, yeah, God. can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, and, and married off. Back. That's it. Have you ever found her? Have you ever looked for <sighs> her? Oh, no, it's too much. Mm, you know, I can't because um, that is as far as I can go. Yeah. She was an adult, okay, 18, above 18. Mm -hmm. So at that point, and then it's also her father, you know, I can't start getting in between that. So I just had to let her go. Oh, yeah. Man, that's so sad. It was really sad. Yeah. So she's, she was taken and married Yeah, orphans. gone. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, think, I mean, I think African uh, culture, it's about children. Like we need you to get children mm -hmm. to continue the wealth. And I'm like, there's Yeah, they don't see the value in education. Yeah. Of course, our pastoralist communities, especially, mm. they see more value in cattle than education. But the thing is that I, I keep saying, like with climate change, the way the world is moving so fast, it's going to be so hard for us to sustain that lifestyle. Yeah. So people need to start getting educated out and, you know, space. yeah, out of that space, yeah. getting education, just exposing themselves to different, um, you know, things mm. that, yeah. But it's good what you've done. I mean, like now someone can go to to can you can get a makeup artist, a photographer, mm. a designer. Yes, that's, they're there. That's amazing. And then a designer even from our program is in Canada now. Oh, yeah. That's really nice. Yes. That's nice. At least guys can get out and be an another mm. Juma. There are more Jumas yes, out there. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So yeah, then you've talked about this is I'm sure this is about yeah. Juma Foundation. Yeah, Juma Foundation. Yeah. So see I did I've done the refugee community, mm -hmm. of course, because I'm I'm part of the host host community, mm -hmm. I felt like I also needed to like at least, you know, do something for them as well. Um, but with the pandemic now, oh, I was good. like, you know what? Parents, I need to focus on one thing, mm -hmm. which is education, because a lot of children are going to have to be sitting out of school because parents are going to be able, I mean, they're going to have to choose between, am I going to feed this child and mm. keep them alive or buy school writing yeah. material, school material for the kids? So I felt like I needed to come in in order for me to keep 
to continue keeping these children in school. If I can talk from my community, there was a lot of children being chased out of the classroom because they didn't have like notebooks, makalamu, you know, all these kind of things. They used to have to, you know, imagine a kid like being kicked out of the kozabu ya kitabu ya 50 bob, mm. just 50 bob. So, I mean, I felt like this was not right, right? So now with the pandemic, it's going to be, it's going to exacerbate that, mm. that even more. So I decided to focus on school writing material. I decided I'm going to start, um, I'm going to fundraise and buy children books and go and give them and take them back to school wherever is at home. And um, yes, I did it organically, just between me, my friends and family. We fundraised and then I thought, you know what, I'm not going to, I don't want to come and buy books from just a supermarket. And um, uh, you know, because they promoted a lot of Western culture. Yeah. You'll see Disney, you'll see Marvel, you know, like some frozen fr princes out over there. I was like, and we have such, I mean, our culture is so Cute. vibrant, mm. beautiful, you know, why not, pro you know, promote that? Why not let our children embrace that? And then also the fact that it's also disappearing. Mm. Yeah, it's also disappearing because I was, you know, always like when, when I'm in Trukana, I talk to my, me I'm fluent in Trukana by the way. Up to date, I yes. love that. <laughs> so, I mean, I talk to my little cousins in Trukana. Imagine they answer me in Swahili. I'm just like, no, this no. is not right. Let's keep at it. Mm. Mm. So I was like, okay, there's something, you know, it's, it's not right. So um, I decided to, to whatever, to, and then another thing is also, the reason, I feel like the reason why there's tribalism in Kenya, the reason why there's so much tension between tribes is because we don't know each other, mm -hmm. right? Imagine a Trokana who is in the middle of nowhere. How do they get information about other tribes in yeah, Kenya? Yeah, they just know themselves. Yeah, they just know themselves. Of course, what you don't know, you'll always be afraid, mm -hmm. afraid of. So I was just like, you know what? Let me start with the younger generation in, um, in the hope that, you know, Kenya, the younger generation will grow up as a united Kenya. So I animated myself in the covers of these books in the different tribes, right? Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just take you through them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so cute. Uh, so, for example, what tribe is that? I would just guess and say Maasai. Of course. <laughs> that one you know. I'm so intelligent. <laughs> so at the back, uh -huh. I, I put the map for them mm -hmm. and then I okay. showed them where the Maasai um, county is mm -hmm. and then also how to greet in Maasai. Oh, so Because, well. yeah, so when I'm out there in Trokana, I show them all the tribes. I give the kids every single tribe. Then at the back, of course, I tell them the next time you see a Maasai, please greet them in Maasai because we love each other as Kenyans. Okay. So yeah. well. Yes, yes. So well. And then here we have. I'm just gonna guess again and say <laughs> Trukana. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so this is the Trukana. <laughs> I'm so smart. My tribe. Mm -hmm. So I've done the same for them. Mm -hmm. The map of Kenya. Inside, of course, um, how to greet in Trukana. That you so, pronounce it as Ejoha. 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 Oh, the mm. case. Yeah, Ejoha. Ejoha. So the next time they see they, they have a Trukana friend or see Trukana, they're able to greet them in um, Trukana. Yeah, and also I show them where the where county they, is. Yeah, okay. Yes. Of course, I don't forget our Muslim sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. or I have to represent them as well. So this is the Swahili. Um, at the back, I also do the same for the children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have names for them? Yes. What's her name? Pendo. Oh, I wish she was called Aisha. Ah, Pendo. <laughs> this is Akidot. Aki? Akidor. 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 Um, this is um, Naisenya. Naisenya. Yes. Plus you. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. And then this is Mumbi. Ah, oh, Akidoyo. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's, I, I usually, you know, hold up the book like this. Imagine the kids usually don't know. Yeah. I'm yes. like, who is this? Or, unless it's their own tribe, uh, they will know. Mm -hmm. But usually they don't know. So I just, I'm just educating them a little okay. bit. Usually tell them this is the Kikuyu regalia. At the back, also the same thing, the, Kiku, yeah. the map, and then where the, Kiku, where the Kikuyu are. County is, and then also how to greet. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, Samburu. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, the same. Kejua. Kejua, yeah. Uh, what's her name? Um, Nasangai. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, you know what's funny? Mm -hmm. Like in Samburu, you know, for example, you see the community between Isiolo and Samburu. So there's also this tension also between Samburu and um, Trukana. Really? Yes. Okay. So it was really good for me to go there because I am Trukana, yes, but I'm serving both 
mm. communities. I don't care if you're Samburu or if you're Trokana, because um, the Isiola was like mainly Trokana, Samburu was Samburu. So even when I was like giving out the books in Isiolo, mm. for example, I mean in Samburu, they were like exchanging. They didn't want the Trokana, they wanted the, they want the Samburu. <laughs> I was like, oh no, this is really bad. Yeah. So it's, it's really good we're doing that. Yeah, it's just important. Just to show them, yeah, to show them, um, yeah, that it's okay. I mean, we should be you know, Together, united, yeah. yeah. So these were from class four to class eight. Mm -hmm. So when I was handing these out, the little ones were crying. So I decided to make small ones for them. Oh, yeah. what's that? This is my niece. Oh, yeah. she's so cute. <laughs> so it's just simple. Mm -hmm. I did that for them and then put, I just put animals ah, at the okay. back. Something that they can relate yeah, to. Yeah, just, I wanted a face that they can relate yeah. to, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I just put animals at the back. Mm -hmm. So, so far we've, um, I just started this year. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I've done um, two quarters and we've already impacted 12,000 children. Oh, that's Yes, really nice. in nine counties. Yeah, so I'm going through the whole of Kenya, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because I'm also promoting unity because of the elections coming mm, up yeah. as well with the communities as well. Yeah, so I've done, um, Trukana County, Isiolo County, Saburu County, Kwale County, um, West Pokot County. Kwanza mm. West Pokot was so hard. You know how Pokot and Trukana yeah. are rivals. Yeah. I, I was so scared to go there because I was like, I didn't know what to expect. Because, yeah. you know, um, growing up, they're like, okay, we, you know, we're like enemies. That's that if you meet, Yeah, if you meet a Trukana, you kill them. If mm. you meet a Pokot, kill them. You know, it's like that. So I grew up with so much fear. So I was also like, apprehensive when I was um, going mm. to West Pokot because I didn't know how it's going to be um, received. received. Oh yeah. my gosh. But I was received with Shangwe <laughs> Navigele Gele. Oh wow. Did I you know. go with someone from in there? You just took yourself? No, no, no. I t of course I had the um, Senator ah, okay. Pogisio ah. who was hosting me. Ah, yes, okay. over there. Ah. So, but then oh, the reaction was so overwhelming. They gifted me. Can you imagine? I, I went to give them, yeah. I mean, I, I went to give donate them. books, but they actually gifted me, mm. you know, they gave me shukas and, you know, a pocket outfit and so on. It was really, really amazing. <laughs> it was a good, yeah, I was a bit scared, but you know, it, it worked out mm. really well. Yes. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're getting there mm. when it comes to, you know, uniting Kenya. Yes. Um, yeah. So I've done all those counties so far and uh, it's been well. We've gotten really great partners like, Chipa Cash, you know, I remember I told you I started um, organically. Yeah. Now Chipa yeah, Cash has cool. come and they're yeah. our official partner. Then we're also having other partners, like for example, for different things. Like when you go to, when you go and hand out the books, you'll find like children are hungry. Maybe, you know, they, they don't have toilets, no water systems. They are barefoot. And so, you know, there's other challenges mm. that these children face. So I'm partnering with other partners. In, in the different challenges the kids um, in the specific challenges for example city walk is coming in for to provide yes. shoes for the oh, children city yes nice. yes we're talking to dollar for food for example oh, okay. yeah you know just the different specific challenges i'm meeting different partners for you know to come in because i mean the task is monumental for me to tackle on yeah, my own it's a lot. yes i need support and then also how Kenyans in general can support. I feel like charity should start from home. We shouldn't always be looking beyond the borders mm. in order for us to, you know, to get some help. To get some help. So Kenyans can also donate to the Ajuma Foundation. Um, um, yeah, can also donate to the foundation. We have a pay bill, oh, which yeah. I hope you will share. I will. Yes, because um, I think we need to start having this culture where where we, we can help each other. Because you don't need to be a millionaire or, Suji, yeah. I don't know, billionaire in order for you to help somebody. Even 50 shillings. Kidogo, on. kidogo, ujaza kibaba, mm. you know. If somebody gives in like 50 bob, 100 bob here and there, at the end of the day, you're still giving, you know. You're still giving. Whatever you have, you can give. It doesn't really matter. Can you imagine when I was fundraising mm -hmm. the first time, mm -hmm. eh, what the, 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 the amount of money that touched me was a hundred bob from my avocado man. Oh, wow. <gasps> Can you imagine? I was seeing, okay, there's all these people donating, okay, 10K, 5K, mm. 20K. I saw that 100 caught my eye. I was just like, who is this sending me a hundred shilling? Then I went and checked. So the guy I buy avocado from, I was just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> was really, yeah, really touching and that's... amazing. Then I also got some 50-50 bobs and things like this. 
I feel like that is like, for me, that 50 is like so big. Because I know whoever sent it to me has, you know, a <laughs> medichuna mm. kabisa for you to me. And mm. so I, I really, really appreciate the support that Kenyans, um, you know, um, give me. And I would like for them to continue donating because it's really important, I mean, for these children to keep, um, to, you know, for us to give, um, to continue keeping these children in school. Mm. Yes. Do you often go back to Turkana? Yes, I do. Oh, <laughs> yes. And you go back there and you see some of the things that I'm sure you want to change. Of course, other than what you're saying about like education mm -hmm. and sanitary towels, mm -hmm. what's the one thing that you look back at there when you get there and you're like, this, if I could get a chance to change this, mm -hmm. this would have been, you know, it. Mm -hmm. What can I say? Mm -hmm. There's so much. Mm. Me is just oh, kids, kids, kids really like touch me so much. Maybe like building schools, proper schools, where children have food, have water. You know, they're just living a comfortable life. I feel like a child should not be like living the lives that I go and you know, what I encounter when I get there. Mm. You know, it's really, really sad. It really hurts so bad because they are innocent, right? I can't imagine my child even going hungry for two, two seconds. I run to the kitchen yeah. quickly, like, you know, give him food exactly. because I want, I need him to be comfortable at all times. So me, it's just the children that really, really get to me. Mm. Mm. Okay, it's, that's nice. Yeah, at yeah, least yeah. you're taking one step at a time. Yes, yes. It's uh, overwhelming. It is. Because the thing is that you can go and give, there's a school I went and gave um, books, but the kids, like some of the kids hadn't been, hadn't eaten for like for two days. And there's three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds. And around that area, there is no shop. You can't even like emergency, like run to the shop and bring them something. So at least, mm. you know, they have something in their stomachs. Can you imagine walking away? Yes, giving them a book. They can't eat the book, yeah. but I mean, they need it, yes, but they can't eat that because that, what is, you know, they're, they're uncomfortable at that particular time because they're hungry. I just had to walk away, you know? It's just so hard. I didn't even sleep that day. And I was stressed. Hey, it's so stressful. It just haunts you. It's like, you know, it's really, really bad. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Wow, that's really nice. Um, When you're away, what's the one thing when you're away and you can you like, I miss Kenya because of this. Okay, other than the weather, don't tell me the weather. Weather, of course. <laughs> <laughs> weather, everyone says about the weather. Yeah. And I'm only saying it's interesting how us here in Kenya, mm. we're like, hey, Jua, let me work sana. Food. I love food, not the food. You miss the food. You mm. like samugali. Yeah, What's kuna vile. food in Turkana? Turkana is just meat. Meat, meat, meat. meat, yama, meat. Yama, yama. <laughs> yeah, no, donkey, no. goat, camel. Yeah, it's just nyama. Yeah. So the, that's the most important yes. thing you miss. Yes. But you can't have No, no Turkana, yes. Meat, I usually mm. miss meat. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just miss Kenyan food because kuna vile. Sishibangi, I don't know, I just don't feel like I've, you know, I've eaten <laughs> whatever, unless I've eaten maybe ugali, mboga, <laughs> like, you know. Kenyan food. Kenyan food. I miss the food, yeah, yes. Mm. Okay. I just don't feel satisfied with pizza and I don't know, I feel like it's jakula. Oh, you feel like it's plastic. Yeah. My friends tell me I feel like it's plastic I know, food. like, yeah. Because, mm. yeah, yeah. Okay. I usually feel very hungry all the time. <laughs> like, I just ate, but I'm hungry again. Yes. <laughs> What's you, wrong? <laughs> will you eventually settle down here? Like, find, like your retirement is going to be here? Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. In Rukada or anywhere, Home. somewhere? No. Yes, I will be probably in the coast. Ah, yeah, like, yeah, the I love the coast. Nice. Yes. Okay, I'm mm. sure even your husband would love that weather mm. too there. You mm. said, Ajuma, how to ambi. Hey. How to ambi. <laughs> hey. We You want to know how you are, other <sighs> than your modeling, other than your foundation. We want to know you as a mother. I told you, Kwashere. <laughs> no, mother, of course, is yeah. fine. But yeah. As a mother and as a wife, I mean. But anyway, tell us about being a mother. To, there's a post I saw you had written. Mm. <laughs> You're wishing your son a happy birthday and how you are oh, running well, around. <laughs> Hey, in the, I know I was crazy. Was, My labor was mad, just made me become crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you said, I was just running around because I felt like every time the contraction came, the only thing that eased it, I mean, cooled it was me to run. I just ran, I don't know, and just, I don't know, it just helped the knee. It just helped the, cool the yeah, helped it. I don't know, maybe just when I ran, I was focusing on something else. Maybe that's a, that, that was a trick, <laughs> but it just made me run. When How the contraction came, labor? ran five hours. Ooh, so yeah. you're just running for five hours. Mm, and then this, the second one, mm -hmm. imagine I didn't even have labor. I just got into the thing. 
to the hospital oh, and I was just almost fully dilated. The nurse is like, how? Yeah, did, were you planning to give birth at home? Like, no, what's happening? You're almost having a baby. I think it's because your feet. <laughs> You know your feet and you run. Oh, what I hear, I don't have a child, mm. but what I hear is if you walk and run a lot when you're pregnant, mm. or if you're very active, yeah. it's easy for you when you labor, even giving birth. Mm -hmm. I have friends who've labored for five minutes, yeah, for three minutes. I'm yeah. like, how? And it the depends. guys will labor for 24 I hours. Know. Hey. Mm. Yeah. So I think it's just the fact that you're active. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, yeah, it was. I mean, was the first one hurt a lot, mm. but the second one was very easy. It was very quick. Mm. Yeah, and um, yeah. And I'm a mother. You know, you know my nickname? Mm -hmm. Bata. Bata. Because I'm crazy about children. Uh, you know how a bata, like, you want to touch you just, the... You just want to... <coughs> how it just jumps on you and yeah. attacks you. That is me. Not even my own children. Any mm -hmm. Anybody's child, you know. Mm -hmm. You see, when a child trips, even before the mother is there, the I'm the one who has dived already and caught it. <laughs> That's me. I'm, I don't know. I'm very, very sensitive when it comes to children. Mm -hmm. And you enjoy being a mother, of course. Yes, of course. It. Yes, but it's hectic. Hey, with Especially work yeah, and you know, a lot. Mm, and then yeah, yeah, and they're very needy as well. Of so <laughs> both of them are boys, yeah. Yes, yeah, boys are definitely mm. needy bush boys, them. Kwanzaa. <laughs> they like uh, like uh, like fishing, chameleons. You know those creepy crawlies oh. that uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, and then sometimes when it gets lost in the house, me me see langi, I'm just like, oh, what if it crawls? You know, I have to find it before you sleep. I sleep because mm -hmm. I don't know, I I can't. Yeah. Do you like the fact that you became a mother mm -hmm. earlier? Because I know there are many models mm -hmm. who become mothers, even they end up adopting because you're past that age and you cannot get children. Do you appreciate, or was it your plan? So that was my plan. Oh, <laughs> I told you I'm a smart girl. Let's go. That was my plan mm -hmm. because um, when you have your child, children, when you're younger, it's easier to snap back. Then also, you know, you're young, you're still active and you have a lot of energy. You're able to go back into the fashion world and, you know, work. So that is that was the reason why I had my children early. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I went back and, you know, we can't even tell, honey, <laughs> we can't tell you have two <laughs> children. No, the thing is that, you know, when I went, when I came into the industry, I met Kina Alec, Kina Naomi, Ooh. Kina Jasmine, you know, all these models that were there. Yeah. They were almost like hitting 40, 40 or yeah. 30 something and they didn't have kids. I was like, no, this that's not going to be my life. No, no, African no, 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 children. no, yeah, yeah. I was like, no. I knew already I'm not gonna do that. So Nikajikata Mapema, I just went, had my kids, then continued. Yes. Oh, you've talked about Naomi. You've, you are you friends with Naomi? No, we just work we together. Just work together. <laughs> yeah. Man, I want your life. <laughs> I want I to be know. a model. <laughs> See, that that industry is a bit weird. You can't mm -hmm. really make friends because oh. you move around so lot, much yeah. and you meet so many other models. Today I'm working with you. The next time I'm in Milan, I'm working with some other somebody else the next time that i mean it's really hard like but the next time i see you it's going to be months or something i don't know it's yeah, very it's yeah it's, you never know so it's very hard to like make a make a proper friend yeah okay mm. um there's something i wanted to ask you i've just remembered you are the only kenyan who was actually modeled for victoria's secrets i guess yeah it is. It's yes. not you guess, okay. honey. It's just you. <laughs> okay, How sour. did you get your hand? I'm, here, I'm told you I'm here to do this. <laughs> how was that experience for you? And how did you get that? Um, what do you guys call them? When you get what do you call it? Cast. Like a gig. You know, when you're casted. Gig, when you're casted. Okay, yeah. how did you get the cast? Hey, so, Victoria's Secret is this um, show that everybody dreams to do. All the models dream to do. Mm. And then it's usually girls with big hair. And, do you know? I don't know, just the girls are usually different, sexy, big hair, you know, all that. And um, I didn't fit, I didn't feel like I fitted in that category because mm. I was more of um, um, exotic, unique, high fashion, you know, um, what do you call it? Um, I don't know. Like I, I was just built different. That was that was not my thing. Yeah, when it came it to the industry, you know, when you come into the fashion industry, you're more or less boxed in oh, okay. some, you know, um, a department more or less. Mm. So you'll have the commercial model. You'll have the high fashion model. That maybe me. Okay, the commercial model is the girl next door, pretty, you know, and so on. Then you'll have the high fashion model, which is me, unique, exotic, and so on. Mm. Then you have the catalog model, which is between 
in between the uh, the commercial Commercial, model and the high fashion model then you'll have these sexy girls now sports illustrated and Mm. and victoria's secret and things usually you know i don't i don't even know how to describe them but Mm. very sexy and um you know i i don't know anyways they are different that's yeah they're just different and me i was just like that's not me Mm -hmm. you know first of all i'm bold (laughs) (laughs) finished Mm. so I, then my, my agency just told me once, ah, okay, we have, um, we have a request for you for Victoria's Secrets. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, why not? You know, if there are some castings, they tell you to go. You're just like, I'm not going to get it, so you don't even go, mm. right? So I think I didn't even go for the first um, casting. Then they're like, Ajuma, you're late for Victoria's Secret because they're actually asking for me. I was like, oh, okay. They really are. Yeah, they're actually asking for me. Okay. They're like, okay, let me reschedule for you. So I went the next day. And I cast it. I was like, mm, why are these people wasting my time here? <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I went and I walked, I left. And then the next, the next stage is your own option. Option means they have, um, what do you call it? They have um, shortlisted mm. and they have their board with the models, the possible models, but those are just a handful mm-hmm. and um, you're on the shortlist. I was like, oh, Okay. Me? Yes, you have to go for a callback. Mm-hmm. Oh, now it's excited. <laughs> so I went, I did the callback, went away. Then they're like, eh, Ajuma, there's one thing. It's just the hair, you know? Mm-hmm. They want to, will you mind if they did for you a wig? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, I couldn't believe it, first of all, that you have been confirmed. <laughs> Watch out now, wig, Kwanza. <laughs> Like, wig, you can do whatever you want to my hair. Anyway, so I had to go, they measured my head, what, what, you know, I went through this special, you know, there's this, um, um, what do you call it, hair stylist, you know, of course, the best, mm. of course, in the fashion yeah. industry. I went to these guys, they measured my head, made me a special wig. I went for fitting for the wig, like, how many times, like five times. <laughs> <laughs> um, and eventually, can you imagine, now in the show, during the show, and of course, it was amazing because all like I had all these big models there, Giselle, Adriana Lima, you know, everyone, Naomi, everyone was just in one, Tyra, everyone was in one space. I was like, oh my goodness, like, hey, I made it. I know. <laughs> and then, of course, in the, in the audience is all Hollywood A-listers, mm-hmm. you know. So you see who Kina Beyonce, Kina Beyonce were backstage, of course, cleaning, making their their, their hair, you know, they come and do their hair and makeup yeah. also backstage ah, just okay. to check up or clear, whatever. So you have all these celebrities, big celebrities back there. You're walking P. Diddy, Zia, Jay, Z, G, who, you know, it's Girl. a, hey, it was like, wow, okay, in the dunia I know. And um, yeah, so hey, when it was my time to get into the thing, into the runway, so like, okay, Ajuma, Ajuma is going next, Ajuma is going next. Then the guy comes, the designer comes and looks at me like this, I'm wearing a design, and I need the wig. I don't know why, but he just grabbed it and threw it and pushed me in. I was like, okay, what wheel. just happened? Yeah. <laughs> After all that. Mm, <laughs> so what just happened? Because usually it's like, it's not, it's unheard of, like girls going to like the Victoria's Secret show without hair. So I was one of the first ones. I don't know if I like did that, but I think I was the first one mm. to go into the show without hair. Can you imagine? Because <laughs> I'm like, what what yeah no it was actually i mean people embrace of course yeah, uh, you know, it's something, about it's something different yeah, yeah yeah so i just went i did my thing and you know hey justin timberlake is singing there on the runway oh. for us <laughs> it was really re- yeah, it was really amazing amazing and then you know the after party you know it's like Lil Kim, all these celebrities, Damn. yeah. But I mean, it's nice just for the for for that particular moment. But it's not my thing. It's not my everyday thing. I Me, mean, I like to do my own thing. Najua wa Kenya wakona tabia yao too. Tabia za wa Kenya. We like our thing, you know. We just like it's not my thing. Like to just, you know, for me, yes, I was I was in it. it was amazing, but it's not me. Mm. Unaona. It's just like wow, 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 and then I'm tired. I want to go home. I want to go. I'm done. I'm done. Yes, mm-hmm. I'm done, and I don't think I want to do this for another, you know, <laughs> for a long. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because even the parties, of course, we're always invited to all. Like you know, if you have PDD's birthday or Jay Z's birthday and all these kind of things, we are always invited. But eh, when you get there, the entourage is that. Yeah, it's just overwhelming mm. yeah so i just stopped doing those things oh, okay. yeah i just used to go out with my normal friends 
and yeah and have a good time yeah yes yeah, yeah. because there's too much stress you're, you're i know you're like just this. like this you're in high heels mm. oh the, there's an entourage people are pushing oh everybody wants to get there to pdd i'm just like nah can't uh -huh. <laughs> yeah yeah okay mm. that's very interesting i think what now we'd ask um, my final questions yeah your the year is almost ending yeah. what is your highlight of 2021 I, the foundation oh, uh, definitely my exercise books mm -hmm. i actually created yourself. some yeah i created myself mm -hmm. and it's not just an exercise book it carries our culture it carries the country it also you know it has also impacted um thousands of children mm -hmm. and um i feel like this year through this project i found myself oh yeah I think that's that's amazing. Yeah. That's a very good considering it was it's another pandemic yeah so mm -hmm. that's really good. I feel like I really like um got in touch with myself, you know, with what I want to do, what I like, what satisfies me. I think um this project um has um definitely hit hit home. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. We're just few weeks to the end of the year again yes. also. Any other plans you have for this year? Mm. Um, hmm. Maybe just propelling this, keep going. Yes, with yes. It, yeah. So what, what our uh, the way we are, my way forward to sustaining the project, because now everybody, all the, the general public are really looking for this. Mm. They want my books also. So it's not. I'm not. I'm gonna have to start um, putting them in retail shops yeah. for people to, you know, buy because this is the way. In this way, I can be able to give it back yeah. to the foundation. Yeah. So hopefully by um, January, the next step for the for the for the organization for the foundation is, um, of course, stocking the books yes. in Naivas. Yes. We actually, yeah, we are in Naivas mm. to begin with because mm. they are the ones we are working with at the oh, moment. Okay. Yeah, so they are the ones we are hopefully partnering with mm -hmm. in Jan. So hopefully by Jan, the books will be available in Naivas. Mm. Yes. And then also mm -hmm. we have um, another way also we are, we are sustaining the project is by me, I go to affluent schools like Light Academy. Mm -hmm. For example, I'm mentioning the ones I've You've been. With, uh -huh. Yeah, Light Academy, McKinney School, the Swedish School. You know, I'm going through also gonna go to Riara, you know, all the affluent schools. Um, I do my talk, tell them about my story, tell them about the children that I work with, and um, also just show them how lucky they are mm. to be privileged. Yeah, they are, yeah. You know, there's other children out there who lack even the basics. So in this, in, in this way, the schools are able to adapt my books. By them buying my books, I'm able to go and um, buy more books for those children out in, in the rural areas mm. that need it. Yeah need them so it's going on very well i've gotten some schools that have adapted my books already mm -hmm. which is really really good and i feel like in this way you i'm giving you know the the affluent kids an opportunity to give to their less yeah. um, fortunate um, peers mm. i love that <laughs> and i really like that yeah anything else you want to tell us before we tell you goodbye and do, we do what we've been talking about <laughs> <laughs> Akuna. Akuna. Yeah, just thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll just say thank you for, you know, having me on Tuko. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it means a lot for me and the foundation as well. Thank you for yeah, giving us the opportunity on your platform. Mm. All right, thank you for having us <laughs> in your space. Mm. Um, guys, that has been a Juma. Such an interesting conversation. You've seen she's, you know, she's actually very bubbly. I don't know yeah. why you're saying you're shy. You're hey. quite bubbly. <laughs> no, I'm too, I'm over bubbly. Oh. <laughs> but when you put me in front of the camera, oh. I don't flow. I feel like I don't flow. But when you later, you'll see, you'll see the real me. <laughs> when we're sitting down, we're sitting just down. chilling one on one, and there's no cameras on my face. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, I flow really well. Even this Better week, than you've flown. <laughs> We've had a very good conversation. Asante. All right, guys, thank you. It's been real for Majuma and I. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>